Hey everyone, Vince Giordano, Juniata County Library, and I give you short videos to answer your questions, so ask us anything. And today I have a very special guest, my wife, Megan. Hey, Meg. So Megan and I um, have been working from home and have been doing this now for over a month, and each day... Um, just going through this totally different lifestyle. And we now, as today's the last day of, May, of uh, April, we've put together a list of some things that have worked for us and um, have, you know, helped us through this. So, uh, Meg, where do you want to start with that? Well, um, we can start. So, like, our, our list of, like, things that have helped us are, are things that, that we have found that have made our life a little bit better, a little bit easier. Some of them are really simple and silly, um, and some of them are like pretty structured. Um, so we can start maybe with simple and silly first. Uh, we've been really enjoying um, like feel good TV shows, um, watching things that are, that are funny and light. Um, we haven't been watching anything too like dramatic or scary. Um, yeah, nothing with too much intensity. So that's worked. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, there's just so much intensity and things going on in life. Why, uh, you know, when you're winding down, why include that in TV if you don't have to? So we're very fortunate to have Netflix. Yes. Um, I think one of the other things that has worked probably more for me except it kind of works for you too, are like no think meals. Um, so being able to have, for me and for, for you, for both of us, it's, it's breakfast. We both basically have the same breakfast um, every day. Uh, mine has been Raisin Bran Crunch, which is new for me. I don't normally even like breakfast, but I've been having cereal for breakfast every morning. Um, and then for lunch, I've been having my my own version of yogurt which is uh fruit on the bottom and then a container of yogurt and then i take a granola bar and crunch it all up and add it to the yogurt um and maybe it's like super boring to always be eating the same breakfast and lunch um but for me i would rather eat the same breakfast and lunch that tastes good every time but I don't have to make a decision about like, there's so many other things right now in life that we have to make decisions about that eliminating some decisions, even as simple as food decisions is just really helpful. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, one of the other really fun things that we have on our list um, of things that have been fun or have worked for us for the month is um, Facebook Rummy which is actually kind of like the story of it, I think is kind of funny. So when, when this whole COVID stuff started happening, if you remember, um, my younger sister, Mercy, who everyone has met with one of your first kind of interview videos, um, we were trying to find a way that we could play a game over FaceTime so that we could like interact together, um, even though we weren't in person. And so we tried a couple of like different things and we tried a couple of different ideas. We like had this idea that we were going to like try playing card cheesy over Facebook. But then when we started thinking through it or through FaceTime, but then we started thinking through it and we were like, that's just going to be too complicated. Um, we tried like playing a version of Rummy where we were playing the same exact game but we couldn't figure out how to get our phone situated in such a way that we could see all of the cards laid out on the table. So we were like kind of annoyed that we couldn't like figure out this way to do it. And then I think I was actually the one who invented this idea of, of, face, of FaceTime Rummy. So for us, FaceTime Rummy is that um, usually there's four of us playing and we're at two separate two separate homes we have FaceTime on we're playing two separate games um but when someone goes out at either home the whole game stops um and we're we're keeping score 
um, and are all competitive with the scores. So that's like that's been really fun because we've been able, um, you know, to do something fun like a game, but to also do it and and interact with people um, that are outside of our home, which has been fun. Yeah, when um, except when, you, when it gets really competitive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When when you first brought this idea up, I was like there's no way this is going to work. It's going to be so tedious and it's not going to be fun. And you actually got annoyed with me that I kept trying to like figure out how to do it. You were like, just leave it alone. It's not going to work. Yeah. I mean, with this whole thing, it's like, why don't we just go and play cards? Like, why do we have to, but now I look forward to it. I think it works well. And yeah, it gets very competitive. Sometimes, you know, one of us will, pretend not to hear the other person when they say they go out so they could throw down a few extra cards or I feel like Mercy's probably like has won most of the games too. Yeah, she's very good. She's very good. So that's been fun. Um I think something that has has really worked for us and when we were talking about this last night and kind of like starting to think about where we began at what six or seven weeks ago and where we're at now um routine for us has been really important uh, probably more for me than for you you're just like so laid back and chill with everything and i'm a little bit higher strong um but for us routine is like every weekday we kind of go through the same pattern every day um and then the weekends we try and make a little bit different do you want me to like talk more in depth about what our routine looks like sure please sure. Do. so like so for our routine um i'm not a great sleeper i get up really early so i'm usually awake at 4 30 um and i read from 4 30 till like 6 30 or 7 um and then Vince gets up and we have breakfast. I start work at 7.30 and we work till 11. And then, um, and then I, take, I take my lunch and we take a walk over lunch, except for days like today when it's pouring rain all day. Um, and then after lunch, we get back to work for a couple of hours. Um, and then most days we'll go and, and help do some barn work because I have a horse. That's just a couple miles down the road. And then we'll come back home and I'll usually take a nap and then we'll make supper and then we'll take another walk and then clean up the kitchen. And I have my whole cleaning routine through all of this. So I usually go through that in the evenings. But I think routine has really helped, at least for me. I like knowing what to expect. Yeah. The routine, the, the knowing what to expect doesn't uh, make a lot of difference to me, but I think finding a routine and a rhythm for my body so that I can function has made a lot of difference. I, I know when like the first week when this all happened, I kind of just was all over the place. Some nights I'd, stay up late and then I'd wake up early or I'd sleep in or I'd go back to bed and it was just like a mess and I was getting work done but it just didn't work for us and yeah um one of the nice things in all of this is it's it gives us flexibility that we can say okay maybe this night we'll stay up a little later or we'll we'll change or shift this around and um I think definitely having a routine has made this has made each day feel functional and um and it helps me personally quite a bit and you were the one that pushed me i it was like friday or saturday uh, after that first week and you're like okay we're sitting down and we're putting together a routine and you're gonna follow it yeah and I'm like cool. okay you know i'm sure i like actually like wrote it out with the times and everything and, and what we are going to do i keep i keep threatening to make like cleaning policies and procedures for our house <laughs> we'll see if i we'll see if i get there or not yeah <laughs> where you take your shoes off and when you take them off mm -hmm. yes i'm a little crazy 
Um, let's see other things that have worked probably more for me than for you, but audiobooks have uh, been something that I have been really enjoying throughout this whole time. Um, I've been, see, I've been listening to, I listened to James Patterson's, one of his YA book series, um, on the Angel Family, which was really cool. I think there were like four books in that. I've been listening to the Sue Grafton books um, over audiobook. I had read the whole series. So she wrote like the, I call it the alphabet series. A is for alibi. Um, and then her next book is B is for, I don't remember what it's for, but you know, and then it goes on. Um, and I really enjoyed her books. And it was like one of those series that I wished I could, I wish that I could have um, been like introduced to it again for the first time. So I decided to, to listen to it as audiobooks, um, which has kind of been like getting reintroduced to it again for the first time. And that's been really fun. So I listen to audiobooks while I'm cleaning or putting together a puzzle, or I've been also sewing cloth face masks. So that's been fun. I think you've been probably listening to more podcasts than than like audiobooks i have but it's changed um because normally each day i have a 25 minute ride each way so i don't have all that time to sit and some of the podcasts that i normally listen to aren't producing as much as they used to i mainly listen to like some sports podcasts or some politics and there's no sports at all or you know different political things are kind of put on hold so I don't listen to them as much, probably more music, um, more YouTube. Um, but yeah, the podcasts are still there, but it's definitely not at the volume that it used to be. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that with the Sue Grafton books, you get a different experience listening to them than reading them? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so far, I mean, so far, the narrator has stayed the same. Um, for some reason, when I got to the end of the series, so like, probably the very, very beginning of spring, maybe end of winter, um, when I got to the end of the series, I listened to the last couple of audiobooks um, and found that I had really enjoyed them that way. So that's kind of what got me restarted on wanting to listen to it. Cool. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, I think the last thing on our list is just, you know, continuing to find learning opportunities. Um, it's crazy to think that it's been almost a month now since we did the, the story brand webinar, but we did a, a story brand webinar, which was all about marketing and, you know, the, the message um, that, that companies should be should be giving um and that was really cool and i know you're kind of always looking for webinar learning opportunities and and you know i'm kind of the same way and just wanting to learn and taking the time that we have right now to learn yeah <clears throat> um this one other thing that's worked for us that kind of falls into routines and meals is Instacart. Did you want to talk about that? I, yeah, I forgot about that. I think I had that on my original list. I don't have one in front of me. Yeah, so Instacart has been kind of awesome. Um, it's where it's you can either have it as an app on your phone or you can also use it through the computer. But it's where someone does all of your grocery shopping for you. Um, and then they deliver your groceries to your porch. You can set it up that way. And for us, that has been, that has been great. Um, I remember probably the last time we went to the grocery store was maybe like in, I think it was probably like the end of March. Um, so very early on into this, this whole strange time. And, and for me, it was a really like I had a lot of anxiety about going to the store and being there was a very anxious experiment experience. So I, you know, we tried to figure out some ways um, to eliminate, to eliminate that. And, and Instacart has been awesome. Um, so we've done that and it's, it's been maybe, maybe a little bit more expensive than our normal groceries, but 
I've also felt really strongly that, you know, we need to, to be leaving really, really good tips um, for, for our Instacart shopper because, like, they are going out, um, you know, during such a, a tough time. But to me, it, it, it's well worth it. Yeah. And uh, just for viewers to know, we're in Mifflin County, so I'm not sure the availability of it in other counties, um, but we get we can get it through some stores. And I, yeah, I agree. It's, um, it's, it's very convenient because the last time we did go, there was a few people there with masks, but it just felt like I was walking on eggshells. Like everybody was, you know, just very uptight, it seemed, and rightfully so. It was just very stressful. And um, yeah. yeah, and I... I didn't even mention like the stores. I mean, we typically do our grocery shopping at Aldi's and Aldi's is still the store that we can use with Instacart. I think you can also use Instacart for Giant and CVS. Um, we haven't, we've just used it for Aldi's. But yeah, that's been, that's been a great thing. And I mean, other options for people, like if you, if Instacart wasn't an option for you it would be, you know, doing something like, uh, I think you can do like an order at Walmart and they'll bring, like do curbside pickup. Mm -hmm. I know some um, people in different areas and neighborhoods, they, they work and coordinate with their neighbors. Like maybe, a, you know, a, a young adult will go to the grocery store and pick up groceries for a neighbor who's elderly. Um, right. So there's always options. Yeah. And I, and I think, uh, FaceTiming, like you mentioned, FaceTiming with Rummy, but just FaceTiming in general, mm -hmm. or calling or writing, staying in, in, in regular contact with others, you know, doing the FaceTime with my family and uh, that, you know, it's, it's not the same as in person, but it definitely is better than nothing. Oh, yeah, I think that that's, I think that that's been, you know, a great thing. And, and yeah, I think any, any time you can get any sort of you know, interaction with, with something like FaceTime. It's great. So you mentioned all the Sue Grafton books. Are you reading any other books or any nonfiction, Megan? Yeah. So typically I am like a very vivacious reader, like constantly reading, like going through tons and tons of books at a time. Um, and that's been one of the like difficult kind of strange things during this time is that reading has not been um, super easy for me like it normally is um, but I have been reading I have been reading nonfiction um, in the morning when I when I get up super early um, so we read a Anne Lamott book um, in a book club that we're in and I hadn't read I've read Anne Lamott's like new releases but it's been a couple of years and I hadn't read that particular Anne Lamott book, um, which was Traveling Mercies in, in years and years and years. So when I read that for, for book club, um, I kind of rediscovered Anne Lamott. So I've been rereading through her, all of her books and really enjoying them. I'm currently reading Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, um, which is really interesting. And I've read, I think I've read a couple of his other books. Uh, before this one. And you're into a lot of J.A. Jantz too, right? Yeah, yeah, I've been reading some J.A. Jantz books. Um, I've been reading the Ali Reynolds series and the Joanna Brady series. So yeah, it's just been kind of strange and that I haven't been reading as much as I normally do. Yeah. Yeah, it's a definitely a strange time, but uh, <clears throat> it's definitely nice to have a home library or have overdrive for Libby to uh, oh, yeah. use. Yeah, definitely. I definitely use Libby a lot. Mm. Yep. Okay. Well, anything else you wanted to share today, Meg? I don't think so. I don't think so. I just think it's, you know, doing, doing something like this, like stopping, and you know, we're at the end of the month. So stopping for a few minutes and just looking back, even though there's small things, but like looking back over the last month and, and looking at things that are making your life a little bit better, a little bit easier, something that you enjoy. Um, for me, that's helpful. 
reminds me of what, you know, I need to be grateful for. And every month it changes a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I always wanted to have you on here to talk about books and things because you're the, the fastest reader I know and the person that, uh, I, I don't know, it's like you can read several books at one time and somehow be able to manage them all. And meanwhile, I just sit on a computer. You know? No, you read. I will say my last, my last recommendation and something that has been like great for my life is um, Sharpie now makes gel pens and they're amazing i like highly recommend them so if you love pens and you want a great pen you should find a sharpie gel pen because they are the best thing ever you're a bit of a pen snob aren't you just a little bit <laughs> you you can see you can see in the in the video right but behind behind the iPad that I'm using for the Zoom call is like all of my pens and they're kind of beautiful. Yeah, yeah, you have a lot of them. Whenever, whenever I need to use a good pen or get a good cup of coffee, I look to you because you, you know the good stuff. Yeah, but the question is, do I actually really share the good stuff with you because you don't return it? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Hey, Meg, thanks for being on and uh, for sharing all these things and these great ideas. You're welcome. Bye.